All right, so in the meantime, we looked at a couple types of circuits, uh, and they were labeled, and we talked briefly about what they represented. Uh, but I want to define them and go through some of the rules that are going to dictate how these circuits operate. Uh, the first kind of circuit is what we call a series circuit. All right, so that's what we're going to work through here in particular, is a series circuit. All right, and all series means is that there is one pathway through the loads or the resistors. Through the loads or any loads would have resistance, so we can call them resistors. All right, and I'm going to draw a circuit here. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can draw circuit diagrams, but uh, I'm going to draw the really basic one here. We always start with having a supply voltage. So there's our battery uh, or our outlet. Uh, the longer one is usually the positive, and that's the negative end. Um, and so I'm going to label this V with a subscript S, and that is our source or our supply voltage. It's where we're getting that pressure and charge, right? So that battery is going to maybe be 12 volts, and it's a big battery, so it has a lot of charge available versus a smaller battery with less charge, and that gives you a certain amount of energy associated with that battery. All right, but this supply, we don't have a value yet, all right? But we're going to then have a wire that comes up out of this supply voltage, and we're going to go through a series of resistors, all right? And so there's one resistor. That's the symbol for a resistor. I remember we talked about a, bat, a light bulb was that basically with a circle around it. And let's do another resistor. And we'll do three resistors in this circuit. And then I'm going to take this thing around and make a nice big loop because any circuit you got to complete a complete pathway. Otherwise, it's not going to operate. Not the best effort there. I'll, I'll start here. All right, so when I close this loop here, now I don't have a switch in there, so it's automatically going to be running as long as I have some charge available on that battery. All right, I'm going to label some things. Uh, I'm going to label this R1 for resistor 1. We'll call this R2, and this is R3. And as we learn in series, you're going to get current that goes through this circuit. Uh, and that current's going to depend on how much push we have, the supply voltage, and how much resistance we see. Now, the challenge is I have three resistors. So what is that really equivalent to? So the one thing we need to do when we look at a circuit is figure out what its equivalent resistance is. So if you look at this like you're entering a highway, right? And that highway, let's say we're driving across Pennsylvania and you're gonna hit all these different toll booths uh, along the way. Well, each one of those toll booths is gonna slow you down. Uh, when you hit them really doesn't affect your overall time. Uh, you can hit them all three right in a row or you can hit them spread out. It's, it's like hitting one long toll booth, right, if you end up hitting three. There's going to be a slowdown associated with each one. Maybe each one slows you down by one minute. So there's three minutes total of doing that. So hopefully logically you see, well, if I want to find the equivalent resistance, usually you'll see this as R with a little subscript of EQ for equivalent. That is called our equivalent resistance. Right, so with our equivalent resistance, we've simplified uh, all three resistors into one. And as I hope you would recognize, well, that would just be equal to the addition R1 plus R2 plus R3 would be what we call our equivalent resistance. And this equation, this is true when you're in series, when you have to go through them one after another. You just add up the individual resistance values, right? And so in this, in this circuit, if I add R1 plus R2 plus R3, I'm going to get my equivalent resistance of that circuit. Now, with that equivalent resistance, if I'm leaving my supply and I don't know what's ahead, but I know my equivalent resistance, I know effectively how long it should take me to get through that circuit. And therefore, 
I can determine the flow of that circuit. And that flow, we usually write a little arrow to indicate the current that leaves that supply voltage is going to be dictated by what's upstream. And we call that our total current, or I total, T-O-T. -T, right? And that is our total current that's leaving that supply or that battery. And Ohm's law would suggest that I, if V equals IR, then the total current would be the voltage, in this case the supply voltage, over that equivalent resistance. And so usually when we break down a circuit, we're going to try to figure out what is that current. And as we saw in that lab, well then every resistor, because they're in series, is going to see that same current. Right? And each resistor also has a voltage drop. Right? So there's a voltage drop across resistor 1, there's a voltage drop across resistor 2, and there's a voltage drop across resistor 3. Each one of these will have a current that runs through it, I1, I2, and I3. And hopefully you're realizing, hey, there's Ohm's law again, V equals IR. So we can apply Ohm's law to individual resistors as well. Right? And we just saw that because they're in series, I1 should equal I2, which should equal I3. And therefore, we know that those are all equal to the total current that we, just, that we would just be able to calculate. And it turns out, any loop drops all the supply voltage. So whatever the voltage drop is of each of these is going to be equal to the supply voltage if I add all three of those up. So when you guys split your circuits and they were the same bulb, I had nine volts and there were two bulbs, they each dropped four and a half volts. Or if there were three bulbs, they each dropped three volts. So this relationship will always hold true in series. All right? So what we could basically do is determine all those values if we have certain information. And we effectively start by saying, hey, this circuit, if we were to simplify it, any circuit can be simplified into a power supply, a supply voltage, one equivalent resistance, an REQ, and some total current. This, every circuit we're going to be doing in this class can be simplified to that. Even if there are multiple resistors, we can find what they're equivalent to. All right? uh, if we could replace them all with one toll booth, how, how long would it take to get through that toll booth? All right? How much resistance would that have to the flow? All right? So this is basically how we're going to look with, with series. And I'm going to uh, define a couple rules that we just discussed here. All right? So here's some things you've got to know about a series circuit. All right? In series we know that the current, current, we use the letter I, in any series loop of a circuit is always constant. It doesn't change. Every resistor along that path, every part of the wire, sees the same amount of flow, the same number of electrons every second, or amount of charge per second, right? That's what current. Uh, the voltage or the pressure The voltage that they see, right, if there's 12 volts in the supply, well, that will get divided up amongst those resistors. And depending on what their values are, it will split it proportionally. So voltage is shared or split proportionally amongst the resistors. And I'll do some examples to show you what I mean by that. And, and Ohm's law will help you determine how that, how much voltage drop. And the last piece is that the equivalent resistance is always equal to the sum of the resistors. Again, we use R with a subscript of EQ for equivalent is just the sum of the resistor values. I 
I hear some feedback. Somebody's got their mic on. All right. And so ultimately, we can define that R E Q for any series loop, again, is just R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus however many resistors you have. So sometimes you'll see Rn as in the number of resistors you have. And we can always simplify every circuit down to one equivalent resistance and then apply Ohm's law to the whole circuit and say that the supply of the circuit is equal to the total current times the equivalent resistance. All right, so now we've got some rules that apply to a circuit that is wired in series. 